Welcome to the official April 2020 patch spotlight for OpenArray. This patch contains several long-awaited updates to the user interface and a series of gameplay refinements. As the player numbers have kept surging in the wake of the recent activities within the CNC community, we felt the time was right to fine-tune the balance for Red Alert, our most popular mod by a large margin. In addition, some concrete slabs have been added to the foundation for an open array version of Tiberian Sun. There is a lot to unpack in this video, but fortunately, in these trying times, time is on our side for once, so make yourselves comfortable while we go over the most relevant improvements. If you are interested in a particular topic, here are the timestamps to navigate the video. My name is Five Aces, and this is the future of OpenRA. If you are new to this project, let us set the stage before establishing Battlefield Control. OpenArray is a community-developed real-time strategy engine that upholds the legacy of legendary developer Westwood Studios by updating the gameplay of their greatest classic games whilst retaining the timeless graphic style, adding features from later CNC games while simultaneously giving the balance a complete overhaul to allow for more gameplay diversity and strategies in the process. It is and will always be 100% free to play, has no form of monetization and is constantly approved upon by a team of restless developers sustained by nothing but coffee and ambition. It comes packaged with modernized recreations of Tiberian Dawn, Red Alert and Doom 2000. Tiberian Sun, the third official entry to the Command and Conquer saga, is under active development and will be added in the future. Open Array may feature three distinct games, but at the end of the day, they're all built on the same universal engine. As such, any updates to this heart of our project are going to affect every single mod. In that spirit, we proudly present several improvements that would have seemed all but impossible a few months ago. The Westwood originals were never programmed with multiple zoom levels in mind. Back in the day of monitors running on a default resolution of 640x480, the graphics might have been considered cutting edge. Fundamental changes to OpenArray's render technology have, however, allowed us to subvert the technical limitations of 1995 and implement a seamless zooming feature. Bound to the mouse wheel by default, zooming makes battlefield navigation easier than ever. No longer restricted by two arbitrary battlefield camera modes, players can now choose their default zoom level in the options menu and change it in an instant. Two additional rebindable hotkeys for zooming in and out have been added to account for players without a mouse wheel. With infantry being the size of ants in modern resolutions, no, not these ants, the default resolution was changed to make the battlefield a bit easier to read. Fight your enemy, not the camera. This patch also introduces the option to rescale the user interface. Additionally, OpenArray can now detect HI DPI rendering modes on Windows and Linux, fixing the blurry rendering for players on Windows with higher resolution screens. Many UI elements now include high resolution artwork, staying crisp even when drawn at larger sizes. OpenArray features tons of options and customization, sometimes too many for its own good. New players often reported being overwhelmed with all the menus and settings presented to them. We have heard the call and reworked the display and control scheme settings, which offer two different gameplay styles, each representative of an era of RTS gaming. A new introduction screen greets players upon their first time firing up the game, allowing them to set up the most relevant parameters in an instant. With all these changes to how the game renders its assets, and looking ahead to future plans, we felt the time was right to upgrade the engine from OpenGL 2 to version 3. This might cause some strange behavior or performance issues, especially on older systems, but we have retained support for OpenGL 2.1 as a fallback option for players who experience such hiccups. To go back to OpenGL 2.1, users can simply select the legacy option from the settings. Beware that certain tools like RiverTuner or the Discord streaming tool are not compatible with modern OpenGL and will crash OpenArray. If you find yourself on the receiving end of those crashes, try disabling these tools or swapping back to the legacy OpenGL renderer if you want to keep using them. OpenArray has now been notarized with Apple. This makes the installation process on Mac OS much easier as the application is no longer blocked by the operating system by default.
Another series of changes has been aimed at improving the gameplay experience directly without necessarily skewing the balance in one way or another. Let's take a closer look under the hood of OpenArray. The previous patch set a new precedent by introducing the spectator interface. This time we are following it up by adding an army tab only visible to observers. Activated with a bindable hotkey or via the drop-down menu, this convenient overview lets one gauge player strength with a simple press of a button. This feature was originally intended for the previous release but got axed due to not being polished enough. After some additional polish work, we have finally greenlit our new spectator tab. Following up on the reworks to the almighty shift key modifier in the previous patch, we are enabling the queuing of rally points, allowing for intricate gameplay automization. Flanking, sneak attacks, or my personal all-time favorite, the demo truck surprise, are now easier than ever to pull off. On a side note, default rally points are now invisible. Once a rally point has been explicitly set though, it will show up for good. Legend has it that once OpenArray has reached enough hotkeys and checkboxes, a mythical prompt will be unlocked and allow the user to rule over all other checkboxes. While we haven't quite reached that point yet, we decided to roll with it and add some more useful hotkeys. The top key instantly selects the primary production structure relevant for the sidebar tab currently active. N, on the other hand, will allow players to cycle through harvesters. This improves the flow of setting up economy and allows one to spot idle lorry drivers with ease. To avoid confusion due to the mute button being in close proximity, we have added a brand new mute indicator to the game as well. The pathfinding algorithm has been further tuned to help reduce quirks such as the dreaded communist conga line or units not being able to fire because they are being blocked by their comrades. Empty service depots can now be traversed and no longer serve as roadblocks. This should improve the amount of direct control over one's units and reduce the frustration associated with units ignoring orders or finding ways to execute them with utmost malicious compliance. As an added bonus, this buffs mine layers as their usefulness was constrained by movement logic. When a tile was occupied by an object, such as a mine, only one unit was allowed to enter it at a time. This made the Soviet way of clearing mines surprisingly cheap. In the future, human wave tactics will come at a premium. The same is true for crates. Now up to 5 infantry at a time can get a promotion. Or a detonation. Same thing, really. The map editor used to be like a canvas. Once something was drawn, the only option to remove it was to paint over it tile by tile. We have upgraded the convenience levels to MS Paint by including an undo and redo function. The copy and paste features have been improved in functionality and actor properties can now be edited directly from the client rather than from a separate text file. Speaking of actor properties, we have drastically increased the number of traits that can be modified within the map editor. Undoing your terrible map idea has never been this convenient. More content for single player mode inbound. As of this patch, Tiberian Dawn will have two missions added for the GDI campaign. Dune 2K, oftentimes overshadowed in popularity by the CNC mods, will receive one new mission to the Ordos campaign. Several other single player missions received bug fixes to give the campaign overall more polish. The poster child of open array mods is getting some more improvements in this patch. The following balance changes are mostly aimed at remedying the recent, maybe slightly overzealous buff to aircraft, as well as giving underutilized units a second wind. Many more general adjustments aimed at addressing the power disparity between factions are lined up for the near future, but didn't quite make the cut for this one. Small caliber weapons, such as the gun of the mobile flak, used to have a travel time. This in combination with the small impact profile did cause some fringe cases in which the weapon underperformed against fast moving targets especially from maximum range. Mobile flak projectiles for example could not damage MiG aircraft when fired from max range. As of this patch, all small caliber weapons impact on the target on the same frame as the attack animation goes off. This fixes problems caused by bullet travel time and finally gives Soviets a recourse against MiGs in faction mirror matches.
Last patch saw the introduction of Opportunity Fire for all aircraft. This has turned out to be a decision that will forever haunt loyal allies players, as Yak attack planes benefited disproportionately from that change, so much so that they went from being gunpowder filled paper planes to airborne infantry lawnmowers in the span of one release cycle. We are hitting the undo button and removing opportunity fire from all aircraft for now. As for the future of the Yak, we are planning on implementing proper strafing logic instead, but that will be a topic for another day. To account for MiGs being easier to hit by mobile flags, we are increasing the health pool by 33%. This means that it will take one extra rocket soldier missile to clear them out of the skies. This won't exactly turn them into airborne mammoth tanks, but every little helps. Longbow attack helicopters have historically underperformed against fast-moving aircraft. One of their primary drawbacks was the abysmal missile behavior. We are addressing this by increasing missile speed and turn rate, ensuring that once a missile is fired, it will connect with the target. Another problem we are trying to remedy is the loss of DPS by overkill. The longbow used to fire a volley of four missiles, and as a result, larger groups would waste most of their ammo on one single target. We are cutting the burst down to two missiles, with the total payload staying the same. The total time frame for a longbow to empty its ammo clips is going to be unchanged, so this is a strict buff to its handling. Missiles away! The Chinook has always been a risky proposition. Loading it up with 8 infantry units would often result in losing a lot of net worth when straying too close to an anti-air gun, and the low health pool compared to other transport options such as the sturdy APC meant that this scenario would be more than likely. The Nook is getting a significant health buff this patch to make it slightly less risky. Slightly. The German Wunderwaffe has had its armaments adjusted to give it a more specialized role as a potent tank hunter. The weapon stats have been buffed against heavy armor, concrete and wood, but received a nerf against unarmored or lightly armored targets. Its health pool got decreased from 45,000 to 40,000 HP, and the speed got decreased to make it just slightly faster than a medium tank. This has several consequences for gameplay. In direct combat, Chrono tanks now outperform all basic combat tanks. Their mobility with Blink still allows them to relentlessly stalk tanks and hunt them down or get out of dangerous situations in a pinch. Their lowered health pool and movement speed on the other hand allow opposing players to counter them with aircraft or cheap high mobility vehicles such as flak trucks or light tanks. Blinking into enemy infantry will pose a greater risk due to the lowered speed. Overall, we are turning the Crone tank from a jack of all trades into a fearsome tank hunter, while still leaving its potential to outplay infantry with Blink Micro intact. Another faction specific unit that had no dedicated role, the face transport felt slightly underwhelming as an option for surprise drops. The cargo bay felt a bit too small to perform effective sneak attacks. We are trying to remedy this by adding a fifth passenger slot to this makeshift stealth tank, bringing it in line with the APC. The weapon has received the same treatment as the chrono tank, but since the phase transport was never meant for direct combat, we are increasing the reload delay to keep it from being too effective in direct engagements. Mine layers have received two quality of life buffs. Firstly, minefield placement can now be ordered over impassable terrain. The vehicle will simply ignore any obstructed tiles. Additionally, they will now be immune to mine damage themselves, preventing spontaneous combustion from enemy units shooting the mine layer and triggering the mine that was just laid in the process. In this spotlight, we have been focusing mostly on updates to the user interface, but that does by no means indicate that our balance team has been asleep on the wheel. This patch is not only a big milestone towards implementing Tiberian Sun, but it also lays the groundwork for some big changes in the future, be it a rework of naval gameplay or a possible return of the iconic Hind gunship for Soviets. In the future, we might even release a video specifically demonstrating the progress that has been made towards Tiberian Sun. 2020 is going to be an exciting year for Open Array, and we hope you are as stoked as we are to participate in this journey towards greatness. 
If you want to always be up to date, please join the official OpenRA Discord server. Alternatively, if you feel compelled to test your metal against the top players or want to learn from the best, join the OpenRA Academy server, a Discord group set up specifically to teach newcomers the ins and outs of competitive play. My name has been Five Aces, thank you for tuning in commanders and see you on the battlefield.